Welcome back everybody. Now today I'm testing out an Emerald Lagasse Forever Pan. This one's been heavily advertised online. I got a lot of requests for it. The infomercial states that this will not scratch. They also say it will not chip, dent, peel, or warp. It's also guaranteed for life. Now that's a lot of bold claims. Let's see how it really works in today's video. Let's start off with the unboxing and see how that went. All right, let's take a look inside and see what we got here. This must be the lid. Nice looking lid. It has the uh, Emerald logo on it. Looks, feels pretty standard. Let me keep uh, digging in here. We have the arbitration agreement that nobody reads. All right, here we go. It's a pretty nice looking pan. Let me see. The surface looks pretty good. They've got the logos everywhere. They've got the E on the handle. They've got him on the back here. They've just got, they got his name everywhere. I wouldn't say it feels as heavy as a cast iron skillet, but it feels about average weight. They even got his logo in back here. They got his, his name is everywhere in this pan. Now with him to put his name and logo all over this pan, I hope it's worth it. But I'm going to dig in these instructions, season it, and then we'll get started. Taking a look at all the pans I've done over the last five and a half years. First up in April 17 was a red copper pan. July of 18, the Blue Diamond. October of 18, the Granite Rock Pan, which was later renamed the Granite Stone. December 19 was the Hex Clad. June of 20 was the Granite Stone Pro. October of 20 was the Always Pan. April of 21 was the Ninja Foodie Never Stick. And now April 22 is the Emerald Forever Pan. We'll see how it compares to all of its predecessors here on Freaking Reviews. Some of the features for the pan are a triple layered non-stick surface. They call it a super non-stick. They say it's oven safe up to 500 degrees. Now when I did the always pan, that one was not oven safe and that was a deal breaker for a lot of people. So that's a good feature to have. They say it's dishwasher safe, although I'll get into that a little bit later on. There's a stainless steel induction plate, double riveted handle that stays cool. Now I paid 60 bucks for this nine and a half inch pan. It's typically only advertised in sets. I actually wrote to the company to find out where I could buy just one pan. They gave me a link for that. On that link, they also have other sizes like eight inch and nine and a half that aren't advertised as part of the set. Now the tests I'm doing today are kind of a mix of demonstrations they saw in the commercial versus some things I test most of my pans with. I like doing some of the same tests over multiple pans because it gives me an idea of how these pans will compare. Before getting started, I did season it as the instructions call for. Seasoning is very simple. All you do is heat it up, add some oil and let it sit and then you're all ready to go. So then it was time for my first test and this is something that every pan commercial seems to have it and every review I've done has it and that is eggs. I did a couple of rounds and here's how they went. We're just gonna do a basic test with some egg, let it coat the bottom and see what happens. Here we go. So I didn't put any uh, oil in here. In fact, on the commercial, he, he sh shows him cooking some breakfast with no oil in there at all. I'm just letting it sit and we'll see if it flops out like they show in the commercial or if I have to scrape it out with a spatula. All right, let's see what we got here. Is it gonna swirl around? It's not swirling. Nope, that's really. That doesn't mean anything though. Let's see if it comes off the bottom easily. Oh yeah, oh it is. Oh, it is coming off the bottom easily, very easily. I mean, I've seen this, this quality before the brand new non-stick pan, so I'm not too impressed, but it is nice. We wanna get that swirl they always show in the commercials. There we go, okay, look at this. It is swirling, so we'll, I'll give it credit for that. All right, so first test, boom, very nice, look at that looks great. They always start off this way. They always start off this way, but how does it end up? We shall see. I'm just letting this egg sit. I am not touching it. I don't care. I'm not touching it. Let's take a look here. Well, it's definitely releasing easily. That's nice. All right, we got, okay, we got it sliding around. Yeah, we got the slide. So even after flipping, it's still not swirling. Of course, I have no oil in here. Oh, it is swirling. Oh, it is swirling. I, I got to give credit for that. Well, it's, it's kind of a, more of a slide than a swirl. Now it's not slide anymore, but it was. All right, the egg lifted out very nicely, no problem. Let's keep going with some more eggs. Let's just keep going. I, I've been able to wipe this out with just a paper towel. Look at that, very nice, cleans up very easily. Let's do some more eggs. All right, it doesn't seem to swirl like he showed in the commercial. Oh, it is, it did. Oh, wow, actually I'm more impressed now. I am more impressed now. I'd be more impressive if I could do the flip, but I, I, I can't, so I'm not even gonna try it. Or can I? No, I'm not gonna try it. Sorry, my amateur skills, I just, I need to use a spatula. Hey, the nonstick is, is working really well though. 
I'm impressed because this time, unlike the first one, I was able to get it to release without even having to use a spatula for that. So that is actually impressive. That's not something I've too, seen too often in nonstick pans, any of them. So it's maybe with the Ninja, but not many. All right, look at that. still looking good. Now reviewing pans can be kind of tricky, especially at first, because they always work well out of the box. But how has that pan been used? Was it once a week, three times a day? What was cooked in there? Was it exposed to high heat? Was it cooled off before being cleaned? Did someone use aerosol sprays in there? There's a lot of different factors that can play into how well a pan holds up over time. So your mileage is gonna vary as far as how this pan holds up for you, but hopefully I can give you some idea of how it works, at least for me. But continuing the breakfast theme, I did a few pancakes and here's how that went. All right, pancake time, here we go. Once again, as with the others, I have no oil in here and I believe Emerald had no oil when he did some breakfast items, so we're doing it raw. We're going commando with no oil. Oh, I got part of it. One, oh, there it goes, there it goes. I did not have to use the spatula, very nice, very nice. Oh, that beautiful, look at this, very nice. And once again, no oil in there, so this is all just with the pan itself. I am very happy with pancake number one. Let's keep going. All right, let's see if pancake two will swirl here. Not swirling. It releases very easily though. Very nice. All right, this one is swirling nicely. We are on a roll here. All right, I put a very thin layer of oil in here. Let's try out the oil layer and see what happens there. All right, well look at this, slid right around. This pancake is for the tryptophobiacs out there. Look at that, whoa. All right, it looks uh, really nice on that side. I would say the pancake has turned out quite well. With or without oil, it seemed like it cooked very evenly. It released from the pan nicely, so I'm gonna move on to the next thing. But so far, breakfast is looking pretty good. I should point out that the cleanup between each round was pretty easy. All I did was use some warm soapy water and a sponge. Nothing was really a problem for that. I even do some tests later on for caked on food, so stick around for that. But now it's time for the next time. We're moving up to the big leagues. This is some memorable was highlighting in the infomercial. Some a lot of pan commercials have in it, and that's steaks. I did a couple of those, and here's what happened. All right, this steak's just got some salt and pepper on it. I got some oil in the pan. It's been warming up. It's set to medium high, so I think we're ready to go. Ah, yes, nice sizzle, nice sizzle. That's what we want. So we're gonna take a look and see how this goes. I'm gonna let this sit for about five minutes and then I'm gonna flip it. All right, we're about the five minute mark. Let's uh, see how it sl slides around nicely. That's good. Oh yeah, look at this, beautiful. All right, let's take it off here and let it rest. I'll be curious how that cleans up and then how this looks inside. I should say the handle is not actually not, it's not hot. I mean, as that's been going on for at least 10 minutes and warming up before that. So the, the handle is cool. I give him credit for that. All right, close up of the steak. Looking pretty good. And the outside did char nicely. So I think the steak was a success. I'm gonna do a second one just to see if I can duplicate it and then move on to the next item. Time for the steak taste test. Mm, pretty good. Mm, that came out really nice. I'll be enjoying my lunch today, but let's do the second steak before we get too far. All right, the pan has cooled off now. Let's uh, see how it goes cleaning up. Let's see if those uh, char areas come out. Oh yeah, nicely, very nicely, very nice. I used almost no pressure with this sponge whatsoever. You can see all the stuff on there. Came out very nice. You just finish this up and get to the next steak. It's time for steak take two. Nice sizzle once again. We're gonna wait about five minutes and flip it and see how it goes. All right, let's see how it slides around here. Slides around nicely, no sticking. Let's see what we got here. All right. 
All right, so the crust looks really nice. It's seared nicely. So their claims in the advertising that it will sear a steak, that claim does pan out. All right, let's see how this looks on the other side now. All right, I think, uh, I think we're good to go. I'm gonna let this rest and then see how it looks inside. And once again, the handle is not hot. I mean, it gets hotter up here, but toward the end, definitely I can hold on to it, not hot at all. I think it looks pretty good. The outside's nice and seared. Inside's nice and pink. I think the steaks turned out perfectly. Now next up is just a quick test that, that a lot of people use pans for, and that is a grilled cheese sandwich. Check it out. All right, there it is. We'll try back here in about four or five minutes and then flip it. The outside here looks actually quite even, so I'm pretty happy about that. So let's see how it does when it finishes. All right, look at that, very even. I, I like the evenness of that grilled cheese sandwich. There we go, that's side A and that's side B. It did a really nice, very even. I'm happy about the evenness. I haven't seen this kind of evenness in a lot of pans. Let's see what we got here. Oh, nice and gooey inside. I think it came out nice. So far, so good. So whenever I test out a pan, I like to bring back other pans I reviewed to kind of see how they stack up. So for this next test, I've done that. It's kind of a simple cheese test, and here's what happened. All right, this is my first head-to-head -head outing here. We got the Ninja Foodie Never Stick Pan, and we've got the Emerald Forever Pan. This is actually a test I got from the Hexclad commercial, and I'll show you how it works. First up, you take some cheese. Put a handful in the middle of the pan. After the cheese is melted, we're gonna wipe it out with some tortilla shells. I put these on at the same time. The Emerald's on a smaller burner, but it definitely seemed like it heated up faster than the Ninja did. I believe the Ninja was kind of slow to heat up when I tested it before, although it does have very even heating. The Emerald is almost completely melted. The Ninja is still in, in the works, but let's see what happens here. Okay, the cheese is certainly melted now. Let's see. Put it in here, slide it around. All right, boom. That uh, worked quite well. Look at that, all off the bottom of the pan. Oops, I dropped a little bit of cheese. But the Ninja, it came out nicely. Besides me dropping some of the cheese from the Ninja, I would say it's probably a tie. Something else I wanted to point out while I have these here is look at the th difference in thickness between the Ninja and the Emerald. Ninja on the right, Emerald on the left. Now the Ninja is a bigger pan, but look at the difference in thickness. Much thicker, it's also very heavy. I use the Ninja almost like a cast iron skillet. I'm not, I'm not sure if the, if the Emerald's really met that criteria yet. All right, so next up I wanted to do a test that was kind of focused on the cleanup. I did some bean dip I've had problems with in the past, and here's what happened. For my next test, I'm gonna be making some of my specialty bean dip here. This is more about how they clean up though. I'm gonna once again use my Ninja Foodi Never Stick versus the Emerald Pan. We're gonna get the bean dip nice and hot in there, let it sit, scrape it out, and then see how well they clean up afterwards because this can be kind of a beast to clean up. I've had a lot of luck with the Ninja. Let's see how much luck I have with the Emerald. Now I should point out, I don't usually make this in a pan, I usually make it in a pot, but we're just trying to get these nice and dirty and see how they do. Stirring this up with a Ninja, nothing is sticking to the bottom very nicely. And keep in mind, this is a year old pan with regular use too. Stirring the Emerald, looks like nothing sticking to the bottom. This is a brand new pan, so we'll see how it goes. All right, I think these are actually done, so now time to pour them out. All right, time for the Ninja. Let's see how well it comes out here. Oh, that, beautiful. We wanna make sure we leave some in here because this is about the cleanup process. Now for the Emerald, let's see how that does. Well, about the same. So far, it's, uh, it's kind of hanging with the Ninja, which is good, but I'm gonna leave some residue in there to see how it cleans up after it cools down. All right, this has been sitting for quite a while now. You can see it's kind of discoloring from being so old. Let's see how it uh, scrapes out first. Oh, look at, this. look at the Ninja, beautiful, wow. I've had this for a year, I'm still impressed by it. Very nice, it just came right out. Now, let's see how that compares to the Emerald. Come on, Emerald, you gotta come through in the clutch. Oh yeah. No problem with this. Emerald, no problem. Well, so far the nonstick surface is looking pretty good. Let's clean these out in the sink and see how they do. First up, the Ninja pan, which has just a tiny bit of residue in there.
Ninja just wiped right out. Not bad for a pan that's uh, got a year of use in it. Now let's try the emerald, see how it does. Oh, not bad, not bad. Not bad at all. All right, it is doing quite well. I think it's time to move this over to the gas stove and see how it does there. So up to this point, I've only tested it on electric stove. I wanted to try it on the gas stove in my kitchen in my house. And for this one, I did another comparison test and here's how that went. Wow, it's been a while since I had the camera in this kitchen, huh? Well, today I wanted to do some tests on the gas stove, which I have here. I also want to do some durability tests, testing some things that they show in the commercial. So let's head over to the stove and get started. In one corner, we've got the hex clad on a large burner. We've got the emerald on a smaller burner. I've got them on medium heat. Hex clad about 450. Emerald about 450. Got 10 pieces of shrimp here. Now these are different size pans, but the nonstick surface should definitely hold up no matter what size the pan is, but let's see what happens. And we're off with the hex clad doing his thing. Got the emerald doing his thing over here. Now one reason I like this test is because shrimp is notoriously sticky on pans. I didn't put anything on there. I didn't coat it with anything. I want to make it as sticky as possible. I'm going to try seeing if I can swirl around by holding the handle. Hex clad has done this test before and it's done well. Let's see how the emerald compares. I just realized I dropped one piece in the floor. So it might be nine versus 10 instead of 10 versus 10. All right, while these are cooking, let me see how well they actually swirl around without trying to dislodge them at all. Let's see what we got. First up, emerald. Oh yeah, look at, wow. Very impressive test, very impressive. Is this one of the best uh, I've seen? Very nice. Hex clad, keep in mind this is a couple years old. Oh yeah, hex clad does well too. Oh, a couple of them didn't uh, release, let's see. Still releases easily. I think only two of the emeralds didn't release, let's see. That one, that one didn't, came off easily. That one came off easily. At the nonstick surface, I am quite confident in saying that out of the box, the emerald nonstick surface is quite good. But we've got some durability tests coming up and we'll see how it does with those. All right, so at this point, I'm ready for some durability tests, my favorite part of the review. Now, these are not my tests. These are demonstrations from the emerald commercial himself. So hopefully it would hold up to those, but here's what happened. All right, for my first durability test, I'm gonna do something they do in the infomercial. They said they poured an entire jar of tomato sauce in one of their uh, forever pans, burned it. They even torched it, which I'm not gonna do. I'm gonna go easy on I'm not gonna torch it and burn my house down, but I am gonna burn it, let it cool off and see how it comes out. All right, there we go. I'm just gonna let it sit. I, I don't know how long it's gonna take to burn to that, uh, to that extent, but we're gonna go with it. I'll check back when anything changes. All right, quick update. I did cover it up because it's starting to boil and I don't want to splatter all over the place. I also haven't really used this, this lid much, so we'll get to see how hot that gets. But the tomato sauce is boiling, so we're making progress. All right, just a quick update here. First of all, this, this is hot. That's quite warm. And it's kind of uh, starting to solidify here. Look at the texture. It's not as liquid as it was before, so we're making progress. Check back in when we have something new to report. All right, here we go. Look at this. Wow. This is a brutal looking concoction here. Now, according to the commercial, they seem to take it right out of there. They didn't let it cool. What I'll probably do is take it out and then I'll let the residual parts cool if it comes out at all. All right, let's see what we got here. See if it comes out. Oh, it's kind of moving as one big piece. Will it come out? Let's see. Oh, wow. Whoa. And it's still sizzling. What? Look at this. I don't know how good of a demonstration that is, but I'm impressed. I, I'm, I'm actually completely shocked by this right now. You can see the insides. There's not a lot of residual uh, tomato sauce that's in there. It came out pretty much as one big piece. I think that's an impressive demonstration. I'm not really sure. I've never done that before. Maybe that's how it normally does it, but, but we have one more durability test to do before we wrap this thing up. Now let's check the evenness real quick here. It's over a large burner on medium heat. Let's see what we get. Right, here is a thermal imager showing the, the heat distribution, how even the pan is. It does look pretty even. All right, here is a test we've been waiting for. This is the durability test from the commercial where I use 
this mixer on the surface. I should say of all the pans I reviewed before, the Hexclad is the only one that had pretty crazy demonstrations in the commercials and I was able to duplicate them successfully in my test. All the others either didn't make such crazy demonstrations or failed them. So for that reason, the Hexclad is going to join us for this part of this video. They show it in the commercial, Hexclad show it in their commercial. You run a mixer on the inside of it and see if it scratches. The instructions do say, to extend the life of the pan, do not cut food on the cookware using sharp utensils such as forks, knives, mashers or whisks. It doesn't say anything about mixers and they do show in the commercial so it seems fair to use one on this surface. We're going to put the uh, emerald out of the way. We're going to do the hex clad one more time. Now I haven't done the hex clad since on my review. I mean I've used it a lot since then. I haven't used a mixer in there. I don't know why you want to use a mixer in a pan. Why do they show that in the commercials? I don't know. You have to really believe in the pan surface if you're going to do that. All right here we go. Look at this. Around the edges, around the edges. All right, I'll show you a close up in a little bit, but I can already tell you that the surface looks completely unfazed by the mixer. All right, so this is the second durability test for the Emerald. Now, it's the tomato sauce test that passed, but maybe that's just a parlor trick. Maybe that tomato sauce will do that in most pans. But the mixer test will be much less forgiving than some tomato sauce will be. Here we go. All right, the bottom is not a big deal. Let's hit the sides. Oh. Oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. No, no. Oh, no. Hold the phone. Time out. Ooh, I saw some not look good looking marks on that. Let me grab a camera and show you a close-up. See those scratches? right? You can see those scratches right there all the way around the edges from the mixer. Not pretty, not pretty. Now the hex clad, I have, this is, first of all, it's a three-year-old pan. There's some discoloration. There are no scratches on, on the hex clad. I was watching as I was mixing it. I don't see any scratches that appeared while I was using the mixer on it. Emerald pan, I did see scratches appearing. There's a whole bunch of little pit marks in here where the, the mixer hit it on the side. I did not see that with the hex clad at all, just, just with the emerald. I should point out, I did see some comments, I believe it was on an Instagram ad for this, people said it did scratch for them as well. It's just one of those cases where the advertising over promises and people are, expectations are let down because the advertising goes beyond what the pan can do. They don't need to do that, it was a pretty good pan otherwise. Now that it's scratched, is it gonna work as well? I don't think so. Oh well, I think I have enough information to wrap this thing up. Now for those of you who say that's a dumb demonstration, I would never do that. Yeah, it might be dumb, but it's not my test, it's theirs. I was just going to see if their advertising is accurate. And I would say based on that, it wasn't. But there are probably some people out there that see them using a mixer in a pan and say that's the solution, the problem I need, I'm going to get it for that reason. And they'll be highly disappointed if they do. Another problem I noticed after that durability test is I ran my fingers along the scratches and when I looked at it, there were some black sparkly specks that came off the pan. Now if I had food in there, it would have been in the food. So at that point I decided that I'm going to return the pan and that's, I think it's on them to replace it because it did not hold up to what they advertise that it can do. So when I get a replacement pan, I'll continue to use it and then down the road, I will update you how it's holding up long term. I have to wonder if they're getting a lot of returns on people who are believing the advertising that it won't scratch because it definitely scratches, it scratched for me. And other people online have said it scratched for them too. I should point out that if you do return the pan, you have to pay the shipping cost back and if you paid any process and handling, you don't get that back either. Before I wrap this thing up, how about a quick round of advertising versus reality? Because in my opinion, the advertising for this pan sets up unrealistic expectations, it overpromises, and it really doesn't have to because up until my durability test, I thought it was a really good pan. First point, the advertising talks about the heat that it can handle. They show it with a blowtorch and they say they can handle the heat. In reality, if you look at the instructions, they say they recommend low to medium heat. They say that gas stoves can discolor it. And they say if you leave it on a hot burner, it can damage the pan. Number two, they show a mixer, a metal spoon, and even a sander being used on the pan itself. And the host states, I will quote, it will not scratch, it will not warp, it will not chip, peel, or dent, and this nonstick pan will stay nonstick. The instructions, however, say something else. They say do not cut food on the cookware using sharp utensils, such as forks, knives, mashes, or whisks. They also state not to use steel, wool, or metal pads. The advertising states that it's dishwasher safe. However, the reality of that, the instructions state, they recommend washing by hand because regular dishwasher cleaning will eventually scratch the surface. And finally, it's the lifetime of the pan that the 
the advertising discusses the name of the pants forever pan they do use the word forever and the host says you are not going to have to buy another set of pans for the rest of your life. The reality of the pan is that the guarantee reads, for the purposes of this guarantee, the lifetime is seven years from date of purchase. The host literally said, the rest of your life, I guess that's as long as you live less than seven years. I just want to jump in here real quick before my conclusion. I just want to clarify one thing. I do think the Emerald Forever pan is actually very good. Based on what I can tell from the other pans I've used, how this one fits in there, I think it's actually quite good, assuming that you follow the instructions. If, on the other hand, you want to follow what the advertising states, I think you'll be quite disappointed. And now on to my full conclusion. So in conclusion, I don't consider the pan to be a failure because it failed my last test. I just think that the advertising overhypes it and overpromises things that it can't do. The nonstick surface was about as good as I've seen. The handle stayed cool, it was even heating. It's also just a nice looking pan. I think that if the advertising was more realistic, people would be much happier with it. When I get my replacement, I'll use common sense care like I've used for my other pans I've made last for years, like letting it cool down before washing it, not using extreme heat, not using aerosol sprays on there, not using metal utensils, and not using a mixer. That's all I've got for the Emerald Forever pans. If you've used these, tell me what you think in the comments below. I appreciate you watching, and I'll see you next time.